Since grade school, I was always adept at drawing. In college, I'd intended to go into advertising. I liked the idea of using drawing to convey an idea. I had been teaching myself to draw like a camera, but being in school, I became aware of the tremendous range of expression that art can convey. One day it dawned on me, I'm not a camera, why act like one? In art school, to my surprise, I found myself liking abstract art for the very reasons I had originally disliked it. The idea, what is it about? What does it mean? What is it supposed to be? Became more intriguing than mimicking a photo. I remember doing finger painting since before I could talk. The act of smushing color, discovering form and compositions through the process of moving paint was fascinating. The idea of doing something random and finding landscapes was like magic. After art school, I couldn't afford grad school. I found work painting billboards along the I-95 corridor. At least it was painting. The old joke was, you can't step back and admire your work. While from a distance a billboard looks photorealistic, up close the brushwork was very abstract. Working 50 feet in the air, it was a high-risk job that paid really well. When my mentor fell off a billboard and was killed, however, it made me rethink this work as a profession. Working big scale made for an easy transition to murals. I found work doing big paintings for commercial and for private residences. My favorite job being for an 1834 estate in Fairfield, Connecticut. The owner wanted murals in the style of 18th century France. I was paid to do research at the Yale Art Museum in New Haven, and that was great. That project took almost three years. Too bad there's not much demand for 18th century French art in the 21st century. I had to do other things. Whenever I had downtime, I'd use scrap materials to build giant antique comic books. I couldn't afford them as a kid, so I made fake wooden comics that I motorized and sold at the Bruce R. Lewin Gallery in Soho. So I got the comic book thing out of my system, sort of, got married, had a kid, renovated a house, and went back to large-scale finger painting. Hey, it's safer than painting billboards. I find my new things to be the most challenging. How do you make something out of nothing? I start without any or little preconceived ideas. Sometimes I work vertical with a brush. Sometimes horizontal with whatever is at hand. Cardboard, sticks, paper, trowels. I'll use thick paint and leave it thick, or spill thin paint or water on it, let it run or drip. The painting is about doing it, letting the paint talk. While it can take a few weeks or a few months of layers of paint, I want the finished painting to look like it painted itself in a few minutes. While my work is non-objective, meaning not tied to illustrating the real world, I find myself going in three directions. If I don't feel the composition is developing to my liking, I have my friend Don cut them up on his table saw. We then reassemble them to make a new composition. Most times end up as four panels, I thought of putting a letter on each panel to make a word. This led to a series using four-letter words, but not in the profane sense. Some, sometimes the paint application will remind me of a comic book type sound, like slam or thud. The color will remind me sometimes of a zap. So I work the words in the visual sound effect. 
in the same way that comic books try to define abstract sounds. Another approach I take is collaging elements like jet fighters or old photos, found objects, or neon. Sometimes I randomly apply duct tape to form a matrix. I approach each of the taped segments differently and try to get the segments to work together as to create a unique kind of background. The final method I've been employing is totally without reference or cutting to be totally non-objective. In these as well as the others, I find the biggest challenge is to be spontaneous. Reacting to accidents that occur during the painting process. Finding an order, a relationship of the accidental marks, shapes, and colors. It's a collection of accidents, like life. If the parts of the canvas have a nice dialogue with each other, then the painting's finished. In all actuality, however, nothing is ever finished. It's about accident. It's all about the process. It's about finding ways to keep painting.